Hello everyone, this is Kat, and welcome back to the channel. And today I'll be talking about the Royal Epic Auto Cannon from the event. It took me a little while to get my hands on them, so this video is going to be a bit late. But first up, uh, let's go for a little bit of a size comparison towards the other guns. Here you guys can see a little bit how big it is. Um, so it is a 4x4 gun base, uh, two blocks high, and then it has the actual turret part. However, um, you can't really armor around this gun that well, because if you have a uh, too high block, you're going to be limiting your firing angles. As you guys can see right here. And if I pull it down, then you can see it goes away. Even with something like a white slope, which one of the smallest parts you could throw in front, it still gets these tiny little uh, corner points where it cannot aim down. And of course, in this game, uh, if it has to aim straight, it's perfectly zero degrees, um, uh, like, gun depression. So, it's going to be very hard to actually hit things, especially if it's further uh, up on the build. So, in terms of stats compared to the Whirlwind, the Whirlwind has 420, and this thing has 415. And of course, because this thing is smaller, it has a bit of a health advantage there. This one drains 5 energy, this one drains 4. So with 3 of these, you'll be at 12 energy. With this one, you'll be at 15. So it definitely has the advantage over the, at that point. But the war one is only 486 kilograms, but this one is 729. And something for a similar size, third cannons have, of course, toward 900 health at the epic rarity. Of course, they are, of course, also way heavier. But that's also something to keep in mind that these will not be as durable as cannons. Even though this one is going to be a bit more survivable than the whirlwind, of course, uh, because of the smaller size. And, of course, you're going to have up to four of them instead of up to three. Uh, one thing to note is that with the whirlwind, though, it has the barrel very high up on the model. While this one has the barrels way lower. So, um... This thing actually can have uh, blocks uh, that can hide it way more. So that is where, again, the world has the advantage because with a wide slope on this one, it will have no issues whatsoever. And then it will have its much smaller hitbox than then the uh, world will have. Now, of course, uh, Whirlwind is one of the types similar to the Cyclone and the Jewel in that it is a fully automatic uh, oriented autocannon instead of a semi-automatic tap fire or an autocannon like the whirlwind. So it has a uh, playstyle similar to the jewel and the cyclone instead of compared to the whirlwind. So it's going to be very different there. And that you're going to have to be much closer than, than you would be able to with the whirlwind. And let's go for a bit of a damage comparison. So I'm going to put the whirl to the right mouse button here and add it to test drive. So, of course, uh, the Royal does have the ability of, when it's in 65 meter range, uh, two enemies or more, then you've got a 30% damage bonus. And uh, for that, a bit of visualization for that, I equip one of the cabins that has pretty much that range in terms of radar. So, you can see in the bottom right, my circle, that's the range you have to be in to actually get the buff. It is a very close distance. And here you can see the crosshair, how much bloom it has, how much inaccuracy it has, even at this distance. And in the meanwhile, the uh, whirlwind has perfect accuracy, even across very long ranges. So in terms of damage, a uh, whirlwind, we're going to have to get the frontal armor off this thing so we can directly hit the cabin real quick. There we go. So 17 damage per shot for the whirlwind. 28 for the world, so it definitely outperforms it at uh, close range, yes. But auto cannons are never meant to be used at close range. This one um, deals 20 damage at this range, and this one deals also deals 20 damage at this range. So at this range, the world uh, and the whirlwind are pretty much the same. If you're firing from any further distance, the whirlwind will outperform the world, and at any closer distance, the world will outperform the whirlwind. Now, of course, there's the energy difference, so even at that range, well, even though the damage are the same, the world would win out over the whole wind because it would have access to more radiators, uh, coolers, etc., compared to the real wind. But, again, the issue is here that this one doesn't have pinpoint accuracy, and this one does. So, even, again, the damage 
this one would do higher damage because uh, as the inaccuracy, it wouldn't be able to pinpoint that damage onto guns or whatever else part you want to try to shoot off, which you can do with the whirlwind. So that is something to keep in mind because you kind of have to like kind of make a choice between these two because they're not really playable together because of this one being auto oriented, this one being semi auto oriented. Lastly, um, we're just going to be a bit of a nail in the coffin for the whirl. Of course, we should be comparing it to things like machine guns, uh, the, the rapid fire machine guns, mini guns, shotguns, and of course the uh, single shot shotguns, etc. And at that point, the whirl really starts falling short. Uh, I'm not going to bother you with all the tests because I have done some tests on the video, but um, it gets outperformed very, very much. And because of that, I'm going to have to say that the roll is not really worth making because, uh, you know, the whirlwind hardly ever gets used since there is an epic. And I would actually have to say that this one is worse than the whirlwind. Um, that said, though, it does look very good. So if you want to make some kind of art build with them, that is definitely going to be an option for you. That's it. That's pretty much all I got. Um... That's just, I'm all I'm going to do now is just show off the damage output, what you can theoretically achieve if you have four of these. And then I'm going to, of course, roll the end of the video. So, let me, again, shoot off the little piece of armor on this build. And this thing can do up to 114 per single shot. And with the fire rate, it has... And the uh, maximum amount of shot, it can do up to 2,000 damage in a couple of seconds. But again, you would only be able to really direct that into a cabin. And you would ha have to get no return fire. You'd have to have a second enemy nearby that's probably going to be shooting you up. So, yeah, that's going to be a bit of a problem, isn't it? And even then, you can't even guarantee that a 2,000 damage burst is going to be enough to kill the enemy. Because you first have to strip the armor to get to the cabin. Etc. Etc. So yeah, if you got if you do want to try that out, I mean you're sitting at top po uh, power score, so good luck with that. But if it does uh, get the ability to actually kill things with the two thousand damage you can deal, then maybe it would be interesting. But other than that, I really don't see this gun being any interesting. But now I start rambling, so that's an indicator that this video should be getting to its end. And with that, I'm going to say I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys all in the next one. See ya!